Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McCray. If you've noticed some dark spots in your vision or maybe strings that look like cobwebs, you may have what are called eye floaters. They're more common in nearsighted people and also more common as we age. These floaters may drift about when you move your eye and may appear to dart away when you look directly at them. They may be most noticeable when you look at a plain, bright black uh, background like the blue sky or a white wall. So what are floaters? Does it mean that you're dying? Which is what I thought the first time I had one. And are they a cause for concern? Here to discuss eye floaters is Mayo Clinic ophthalmologist Dr. Amir Khan. Welcome to the program, Dr. Khan. It's nice to meet you. Thank you, Tom and Tracy. Um, first of all, I would say you probably are not dying. Okay, good. Yeah, but she's too young for a floater, <laughs> isn't she? <laughs> are they, can you get them at all ages? Or is there a certain age for floaters? There's not a certain age, uh, particularly, as you mentioned, in the more nearsighted people. Uh, they can notice floaters often at an earlier age. So I wouldn't necessarily have an age cut off for floaters. Um, and what causes it? What are you really experiencing? Most of the time, and this isn't in all cases, but most of the time what the floaters are are bits and clumps of your vitreous, which is a gel substance in the back of the eye. So the inside part of the eye is filled with a jelly. Correct. And these are little... Chunks of jelly. Flex, <laughs> dust? <laughs> what are they? Chunk is maybe not the right word. <laughs> maybe clump. <laughs> a clump of jelly. Um, so as we age, what is initially a firm gel-like substance begins to liquefy. And as it liquefies, it can contract and break up into bits and pieces. Uh. Those bits and pieces are what you may notice as a floater and what I can see as a floater when I look into your eye. Well, so you can see them, the person can see them, but you can actually see them if you look in someone's eye with a ophthalmoscope? Um, maybe not with a, an ophthalmoscope, but with other uh, viewing devices. It, right, your eye care provider can observe those floaters as well. Are they of concern? The floaters themselves are more of a nuisance annoyance type problem, where, as Tracy mentioned, if you look at a blue sky or a white page, they become more noticeable. Where it becomes a concern is if they're associated with something else. For example, as this jelly substance contracts and breaks up into bits and clumps, it pulls away from the retina. The, ret now the retina is like the film in a camera, the back of the eye, what you see with. Correct. Okay. Correct. So as it pulls away from the retina, it can tug on the retina, and that can give you flashing lights. And that tugging can sometimes tear the retina. So if fluid from within the eye gets in underneath that tear, the retina can separate kind of like wallpaper off a wall, and that's a retinal detachment. So we really recommend that anybody who has a new onset of floaters uh, sees their eye care provider for a dilated eye exam to make sure that the retina is intact. Those ones, those floaters would not go away, though. Is that right? If, if you've got a detached retina, it's not going to... Like, uh, usually a floater, you see it, and then it's gone. The floaters that we have from the jelly, the vitreous breaking up into bits and clumps, really don't go away completely either because the back of the eye is kind of a closed space. So they may shrink a little in time, and the brain may learn to ignore them a little bit over time. But again, in certain situations, particularly with the lighting, uh, they tend to be more noticeable. So is it fair to say that if you do have floaters, you're more likely to have a detached retina or to experience a detached retina? Um, not necessarily, because I would say the majority of people as we age get floaters, but only the minority end up with a retinal problem. But it's not more common. Retinal detachment is not necessarily more common in people who do have floaters. Or if you flip it around, I, yeah, I would say everybody with a retinal detachment probably had floaters. Oh, really? To start, because that's the primary, or most people. That's what, lo hmm. that's what it looks like. Um, because that's how most retinal detachments start with the jelly substance pulling away and tearing the retina, providing that spot for fluid to get in. So if you have never had a floater or never seen a floater, experienced a floater, it's unlikely that you're going to have a retinal detachment. Is that fair? Less likely. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's look at it the other way. So in general, when you have a floater, it's not that big of a deal. Not 
not a cause for concern. But what what can be a cause for concern if it ch- if it changes? If you have more floaters, or what are some of the things that you should look for? I've had floaters, and I just I see them, and then they're gone. Yeah, and I, and I'm pretty nearsighted. I've had yeah. floaters for a long time. Um, if I were to see a whole sudden shower of little specks, I mean, almost like little black bugs, and people patients may say that there's a gnat there or some flies mm-hmm. there, and they try to swat them away, and but they're not outside, they're inside their eye. Uh, those can be causes for concern. The other thing is not all floaters are clumps of the vitreous jelly. So sometimes if the retina is torn, it can be a broken blood vessel, and those may be blood cells that you're seeing. Also in certain uh, underlying diseases such as diabetes, uh, those people are more prone to getting uh, blood vessels that can break and bleed easily. So that may also be a source of floaters. So any onset of new floaters, I think, really deserves a a dilated eye exam. Why are floaters more common in people who are nearsighted? It's probably because the eye, most people are nearsighted, the eye tends to be longer. And the wider or front to back or side to side? uh, Front to back. Okay. Mm. Um, that tends to be longer. So the thought is that there might be more traction on the retina because things are stretched a little bit more in the eye. Is there a treatment for them? uh, There really isn't a treatment for floaters. Um, Recently, people have started looking into whether they can laser the floaters um, by breaking them into smaller pieces. I think the jury is still out on that. Technically, uh, a retina specialist can go inside the eye and remove all of the gel substance, um, but that has its own inherent risks as well. And for something that is typically more of a, I'd say, nuisance annoyance type issue, we don't recommend doing that. So it'd be like, you know, you were at the playing a game, you know, and, and you're looking inside the eye and you got the laser there and you, you when you see a floater, that people are doing that. They are, and then that, and then I that can break up. I do not want that. I do not want you to be doing that for me. I'm sorry. Continue. I'm not a very good shot. Yeah, you're, you're right. Um, but then there is, in my mind, there's some concern about breaking those bigger floaters up into more smaller pieces, plus releasing all that energy in the back part of the eye. Is there a way to prevent floaters? I mean, there's um, for macular degeneration. You know, there's vitamins. Things. Is there ways that you can prevent it? Not really. Okay. Not really. Again, this whole process of the of the vitreous gel liquefying is, I put it more in the natural aging category. So when my kids say that they have a floater, if I were to say you're having that, experiencing that because you're not eating enough vegetables, that would probably not be true. <laughs> but um, it's, it, it would still be depending good mothering. On, depending on the age of your kids, okay. that still may be valid advice. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, so you, you've told us that if you have floaters for the first time, and in particular if you have multiple ones, it's probably worth a checkup. Let's talk about, we've got a minute or so remaining. Tell us about some other changes in vision or sim- eye symptoms that ought to be checked out, that um, ought to make you go see an ophthalmologist or at least your family physician to have it checked out. You know, in addition to floaters, if you notice an area of your vision is missing, uh, that would be another good reason uh, to get a dilated eye exam. Like if you can't see the right half or the top or the bottom or correct something like that. Yeah. Correct, because that could be a sign of a retina problem. It could be a sign of an optic nerve problem. Right. It, reduced field of vision would be Reduced field of vision. Reduced visual acuity. You just can't see as clearly. Um, it may be something simple, like you need to get a new glasses prescription, but again, it could be anything else from cataract or macular degeneration. That's tricky because it happens so gradually that you don't notice what you don't notice. Correct. And oftentimes people don't notice until maybe for some reason they rub one eye and then all of a sudden they're looking with their bad eye and then they're like, oh, when did this happen? Mm-hmm. All right. Anything else we ought to worry about? Um, in terms of the eyes? Yeah, in term- <laughs> <laughs> well, we got lots to worry about, but things that ought to prompt one to go see their eye doctor. Um, it, just in general, I, I would say... Um, <laughs> Every few years, it's probably reasonable to get an eye exam to measure things like the pressure inside your eye. 
some things may be asymptomatic and best caught early. So I think routine eye care is important. All right. See your doctor every three years Sounds or good. sooner if you need it, Very especially good. if you're new to floaters. <laughs> okay. All right. We've been talking about eye floaters with a Mayo Clinic specialist, ophthalmologist, Dr. Amir Khan. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Khan. Good to have you on the program. Thank you, too.